سديدة أحرف عربي مفيدة بالقرآن سديدة وبها أقرأ قرآني وبها أقرأ قرآني حتى يحكم الإيمان الله الله حتى يحكم الإيمان الله الله حتى يكمل إيماني الله 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 أكبر الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful all praises due to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to all of our viewers out there our brothers and sisters in Islam our brothers and sisters who may not be of the Muslim faith our brothers and sisters in humanity we begin by greeting you with the Islamic greetings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings and the mercy of Allah be upon all of you. In the last few episodes, we've been talking about some of the Quranic verses that spoke about not necessarily the concept of God, but rather more of the attributes and the names and the qualities and the characteristics of God. And we looked into chapter 112 and we looked into some verses from chapter number 2, verse number 255 famously known as Ayat al-Kursi. However, the Quranic presentation of God was best implemented and applied and understood by the Messenger of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See, again, just as a reminder, the point is that we know God so that we are able to have more of a proper relationship with God, so that we are able to worship Him with emotions. And when we say that, we're talking about positive emotions. We are asked to know so that we worship. And the essence of worship is unconditional love that is associated with unconditional obedience. You may unconditionally obey, but not necessarily because you want to, sincerely, genuinely, authentically. But the true essence of worship is when you worship with heart. And that means that emotionally you are involved in your acts of worship. Otherwise, they become void, they become empty. And through time, they may even seem to be very mechanical, very dry, and they can be seen as a burden on those who are committing these acts of worship. Now, what makes all this vanish is our awareness and our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only this, but knowing more about Allah puts a lot of comfort, a lot of tranquility in the heart of those who are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, and we're just taking a few examples here and there, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in the Qur'an, for example, at the very beginning of Surah Ghafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some of His qualities. The fact that, مَا يُرْسِلْ مِنْ رَحْمَةٍ فَلَا مُمْسِكَ لَهَا That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to give, there will be nobody to withhold. And, وَمَا يُمْسِكْ فَلَا مُرْسِلَ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ And if He chooses to withhold, there will be none to give after him, meaning that the ultimate decision is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood this. And it is mostly beautifully demonstrated in the prayers that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do. It is the sunnah, meaning the tradition of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is that before he begs of Allah, he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, making dua or supplication or begging of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described it as Mukhul Ibadah. It is the essence of Ibadah. And in the other hadith it said, Huwal Ibadah. It is worship. In other sense, when you pray, you are making more than one statement. You are saying that Allah is capable. You are saying that I'm in desperate need of what Allah has for me. And then you're also saying that Allah does hear. And Allah has the ability to respond to what it is that I am praying for. So it is really is the essence of worship. There is this idea of, oh Allah, I cannot do it, but you can. 
O oh Allah, on my own I am weak, but with you I am strong. O oh Allah, I beg of you because you have and I don't. O oh Allah, you know that and I do not know. So there is an ultimate distinction you are making between, O oh Allah, I am down here and you are up there. O oh Allah, I am tiny and little and I am insignificant compared to who you are. O oh Allah, please look down onto me with your mercy and shower me with your grace. So there is this idea of tazallul, what we call humility in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this you express. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did so, but in the process he also praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the Prophet peace be upon him, after he is finishing with his prayers, he would say assalamu alaykum, assalamu alaykum, that's how we conclude the ritual of prayers. And then he would start saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah means, I'm seeking the forgiveness of Allah. I seek Allah forgiveness. Oh Allah, I'm seeking your forgiveness. Now that is very interesting. Why would somebody be saying, Oh Allah, I seek forgiveness from you, even though you just finished a good deed. You just did your daily prayers. And the very first thing that you say is, Astaghfirullah, Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. You were not involved in something that was evil to say, Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. You were not involved in something that was wrong to say, Oh Allah, I'm seeking your forgiveness. You're not guilty of a poor choice or a poor decision to say, Oh Allah, I am seeking your forgiveness. So why would somebody say, Astaghfirullah, 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 even though they just finished their prayers. Beautifully, it is described as such, that my prayers could have been better. That Allah is so majestic, Allah is so supreme in His glory that Allah deserves better than what I am presenting Him. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Allah, I am presenting this prayers for you, even though it is not befitting to your majesty. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. I seek your forgiveness. I seek your forgiveness. Even though subhanAllah, we human beings, sometimes we do this with one another. You have a very dear friend that is very close to your heart whom you admire a lot, whom you love so much. You present him with a gift and then what do you say? I'm giving you the best gift in the world? No, that's not how we say it. But rather you say, here is a simple gift that I'm giving to you. You deserve better than this. But you know, it is the gesture that counts. So with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we say, Oh Allah, your majesty is worthy of much more than what I am giving you. Oh Allah, you are so majestic. You are so supreme. Oh Allah, you are beyond this, but oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Accept this from me, Allah, and I seek your forgiveness. So this is how the Prophet would go about it. But then, interestingly also, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say, Allahumma la mani alima a'atay. Oh Allah, no one can withhold that you choose to give. Echoing the same verse that is mentioned in Surah Ghafir. Allahumma la mani alima a'atay. Oh Allah, no one can withhold that which you choose to give. Wa la mu'atiya lima mana'at. And no one can give that which you chose to withhold. Wa la yanfa'u dhal jadd min kal jadd. And nobody is availed from your wrath because of their wealth. Allah is in not need of any wealth. So for somebody who thinks that they are wealthy, their wealth will not avail them from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they are worthy of it. بِيَدِكَ khair. In your hands are all the gates of goodness. بِيَدِكَ khair. And the Prophet ﷺ would speak so sweetly, so beautifully, in such a magnificent way of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Not only this, but see remember the more we know of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we are emotionally involved in our worship with Him. But also what they say is that you know what people love most by looking into what do they talk about most. What do people talk about most? And that will tell you what do they love most. And what they love most is going to determine how they are going to live their lives. So in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, udhkuru Allah dhikran kathira. O ye who believe, remember Allah with much remembrance. Wasabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. And sing His glory, sing His praise 
during the day and during the night. Bukratan, at the early breaking of the day, wa asila, at sunset or as the sun is going down, in the morning and in the evening. Why is this? The invitation is that if you are constantly in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that you are God conscious. You cannot remember a thing that you're not emotionally attached to. Unfortunately, sometimes we may remember a thing because we feel so negatively about. Some of us are consumed by people that we don't like. Day and night we're thinking about them. We are engaged in their remembrance, but that is a negative type of remembrance. That is not what we are invited to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. But rather it is remembrance that indicates love. It is remembrance that presumes love. It is remembrance that gives an idea that whoever is doing the remembering is emotionally positively involved with the one that is remembered. In this case, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remember the bounties of Allah upon you so that you may become prosperous. Now that is very interesting. How does remembrance lead to prosperity? See brothers and sisters, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is jeopardized when we forget Him. Especially when we forget how good He has been to us. Despite the fact that he is in absolute no need of us whatsoever, yet he is good to us. So we jeopardize and we compromise our relationship with Allah when we become forgetful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah invites us. Remember the bounties of Allah, you become prosperous. What would happen if you remember? When you remember, you became grateful. When you are grateful, you become prosperous. And with this, we are going to hold on to this thought. And inshallah, we're going to take a quick break and we will be back. So please do stay tuned. Allah, 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 Akbar. Welcome to a pathway of understanding through the gates of wisdom and peace. Abdul Rahim Green. Many people claim that what they have is from God. But the question is, can they prove it? If you are looking for certainty in an uncertain world, or maybe you're just curious, why do Muslims believe what they believe? To find out more, do not miss our fascinating and challenging series, The Proof That Islam Is The Truth. Join Abdul Rahim Green in the proof that Islam is the truth tonight at 10.30 p.m. UK and 11.30 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. Allah, 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 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings and the mercy of Allah be upon all of you. And welcome back again as we are doing our Quranic reflections here. And if you have just joined us, this is a continuation of what we've been talking about in the past, the attributes and the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they are presented in some Quranic verses. And today we are looking into how did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understand the invitation of the Quran to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and how did he translate it especially in the way that as he is invoking and calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the example that we cited very quickly was oh Allah no one can withhold that we chose to give and no one can give that which you chose to withhold and no one can avert your decree and nobody can avail your themselves of your wrath if they are worthy of it due to their wealth in your hands are all gates of goodness. So the point is, the more we know of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the stronger of a bond we are able to form with Him. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to remember Him with much remembrance. And the point is that what we remember most, it is that we are emotionally attached to most. And sometimes that can either be negative or positive. And obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us to remember him as an indication 
of a positive emotional attachment with him. So it is, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, udhkuru allaha dhikran kathira. Or ye who believe, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with much remembrance. Imagine this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would get up from his sleep. And the very first thing that he would do is that immediately he would get himself engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, the very first statement that he makes, Alhamdulillah alladhi radda ilayya ruhi wa adhina li bi dhikri. All praise is due to the one who has sent my soul back to me. Uh, just a brief explanation here. The belief is that sleep is what we call a minor death. When you go to sleep, your soul departs your body. And then when you wake up, you wake up because your soul is being sent back to your body again. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, All praise is due to Allah who has sent my soul back into my body again. Meaning that he is being grateful for life. Alhamdulillah, alladhi radda ilayya ruhi. All praise is due to Allah who has given me back my life. But then he makes something very interesting. The statement that he makes, he said, وَأَذِنَ لِي بِذِكْرِ And he has permitted me to engage myself in his remembrance. That is very sweet. That is very humble on the part of our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes we remember Allah and we think that we are doing Allah a favor. Sometimes we remember Allah and we become very self-righteous. Sometimes we remember Allah and we become very full of ourselves. We become very arrogant. And the worst type of arrogance is the one that is religiously based. When we become arrogant because of what we think our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is or is becoming. But not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does he say? He praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving him his life back. But then he also makes the statement, وَأَذِنَ لِي بِذِكْرِ And he has permitted me that I engage in singing his praise and that I am involved in his remembrance. And we see that throughout the day. For example, the Prophet, peace be upon him, is about to eat or he is about to drink. And he would make some of the most beautiful statements. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Allahumma barik lana fi ma razaqtana. Oh Allah, bless what you have granted us with. Meaning that make it of benefit. You have given us food. Make it of benefit, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ And save us from the chastisement of the hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would finish eating. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would put on new clothes and he would remember Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would step out of his house and he would make some of the most beautiful dua. For example, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would step out, what does he say? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adilla aw udall. أو أزل أو أزل أو أظلم أو أظلم أو أجهل أو يجهل علي. Oh Allah, as I am stepping out of my home, I seek refuge in you. اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أظل أو أظل. That I be misguided or that I be the cause of misguidance to others. أو أزل أو أزل or that I slip, meaning that I err, or I cause others to slip or I cause others to err. أو أظلم أو أظلم أو that I oppress others or that I be oppressed of by others أو أظلم أو أظلم أو أجهل أو يجهل علي or some of the ignorance may act or that may I I seek refuge in you that not out of my ignorance that I act in a foolish way or that the ignorant may act in a foolish way towards me this is so beautiful. When we leave our homes, it means that we are getting ready to become engaged with people. We are going to interact with people. And in our interaction with people, some of the interaction may be positive and some of it may be negative. And as I am embarking, I am leaving my home, what do I want? The Prophet ﷺ said, now that I am about to interact with people, I see protection from these four things. Oh Allah, in my interaction of people, let me not be the cause of misguidance to others or that I be misguided by people. I want to be on the straight path. Oh Allah, when I come to interact with others, 
cause me not to make them err and cause them not to make me err. I want to keep my straight up in this character where I'm of an upright lifestyle that I'm involved in. And then, oh Allah, I don't want others to wrong me. And I do not want to be the cause of wronging others. I do not want to be oppressed by people. And I do not want people to oppress me. And then he would say, Aw azilla, aw uzal. I do not want to cause people to slip, nor do I want to be caused to slip by other people. And this is all is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the process, it's also an expression of an attitude. What kind of attitude do you take with you as you are leaving your house? You want to be a source of peace. You want to be a source of guidance. Allah, I don't want to be misguided and I do not want to misguide. You want to be a source of people that facilitate, promote and encourage justice. Where he says, oh Allah, I do not want to oppress people and I do not want to be oppressed by people. You do not want to be a cause for people to act foolishly. So you say, oh Allah, let not the ignorance of people cause them to act foolishly towards me. Oh Allah, protect me for my own ignorance that I act foolishly towards other people. What beautiful words. This is how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught. And this is an indication of how close of a relationship that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had with his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautifully expressed in the way that he begs of Allah. Beautifully expressed in the way that he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautifully expressed when he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would even start walking towards the mosque. You know, here you are walking towards the masjid. In itself that is telling. Yet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray. And what does he pray for? As he leaves the house, he would say, Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi noora, wa fi aqli noora, wa fi sam'i noora, wa fi basari noora, wa fi sam'i noora, wa an yameeni noora, wa an shimali noora, wa min amami noora, wa min khalfi noora, min fawqi noora, wa min tahti noora. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would say, as he is walking out, he would say, Oh Allah, in my heart instill light, in my eyes instill light, in my mind instill light, in my ears instill light. To my right, please make sure that there is light. To my left, there be light. In front of me, there is light. Behind me, there is light. On top of me there is light, beneath me there is light. Oh Allah grant me light, increase me in light and make me light. Why is all of this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants that all the time, consistently and throughout, he wants to be guided. And that light is everywhere, in what he sees, in what he hears, in what he thinks, in what he feels, in that which is around him. Be it on the right, be it in the left, be it in front, be it in the back, be it above, be it below. The Prophet wasallam wants to be surrounded by light. Always take it to light. But the point is, Muhammad wasallam is in this close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing fully well that as he is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, there is this attitude that is brought in the dua of the Prophet wasallam. This is a man that would remember Allah throughout. Even when he goes to sleep, he would be remembering Allah. If he wakes up during the middle of the night, the first thing that he would do is that he would be engaged in the remembrance of Allah. But remember this, all of this comes as a knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you know of him, the more you love him. The more you love him, the more emotionally attached you become. The more emotionally attached you become, that is going to manifest itself in the way that you speak about God. When you speak about God, where you speak about God, where your relationship with Allah is no longer confined neither by time, nor by place, nor by space, nor by company, nor by anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us knowledge of Him, emotional attachment to Him, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our love to him. And with this we come to the conclusion of this episode. Very grateful that you have joined us. And hope that inshallah he will join us next time that we are on. And until we meet next time we say so long and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.